One Win Wonders. They make up a good portion of NASCAR's history. They're drivers that score their 15 minutes of fame on a certain day and never find that fame again. Across the top three series, there are 63 drivers in Cup, 47 in Xfinity, and 43 in the Truck Series that have scored only one win in those series. The definition of the term can be described in two ways. Those drivers may only have one win in the series, but have multiple wins in another series. Jimmy Johnson is a good example for this. He is a one-win Xfinity wonder, scoring his only win at Chicagoland in 2001, but would go to create a dynasty in the Cup Series. Johnny Benson also fits this description. He has one Cup win at Rockingham in 2002, but is a champion in both Trucks and Xfinity Series, or the more accurate definition of only having one win across all three series. But those wins, they can be quite memorable. David Gillen fits this description. David took a part-time Xfinity team and went went on to beat the Goliaths of NASCAR at Kentucky in 2006. Kale Gale's win is also pretty rememberable, as he beat Kyle Busch Ricky Craven style at Homestead in 2012 for his only Truck Series win. While those wins are memorable in their own right, no one win has more implications to it that had it not happened, the history books would be telling us a different story. That one win comes from a driver that has had had the taste of victory taken away from him so many times that we never thought it would happen. That win comes from a driver out of Kannapolis, North Carolina, Daniel Hemrick. To understand how this win is so big, we gotta start from the beginning. Daniel was born in Kannapolis, North Carolina, aka Earnhardt Country, so it came to no surprise that he wanted to go racing. He started racing go-karts at age 5, racing at Concord Speedway, when it combined 11 races in the track championship before age 10. After go-karts, Daniel went on to race Bandoleros and at age 16, with the help from Tim Ledega, Ledega? Ledega. He started racing Legends cars, which saw him win another championship at Concord, and won the Legends Pro National Championship in 2008. In 2009, Daniel raced 80 Legends races, and he ended up winning 60 of those races. Daniel ended up also winning a second straight national championship, along with winning the Summer Shootout Series at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, winning 6 of the 10 races at the track. 2009 also saw Daniel dabble in late models, as he ran runner-up in his first start at Concord. 2010 saw the biggest achievement in Daniel's career to that point. The Charlotte Motor Speedway held its first Legends Million race. Over 300 racers traveled to win the biggest purse in Legends car history of $250,000 for first place. Not only did Daniel have the task of beating 300 other racers, he needed to make it to the track first. On the way to Charlotte, Daniel ran out of gas in his car. In order for him to make it there, he had to pump the gas out of his race car to make it to the track. And he had no way of making it back home until he ended up winning the race and receiving the giant check. From there... Winning races and championships just seemed like a habit for him. In 2012, Daniel won the CRA All-Star Late Model Championship with 8 wins, along with another Summer Shootout Series title. In 2013, Daniel won another Late Model Championship, winning the Southern Super Series Championship. All this winning helped Daniel get his big break in the NASCAR. In October 2013, Daniel made his first start in the NASCAR Truck Series at Martinsville, driving the number 6 for Sharp Gallagher Racing. Unfortunately, his first start didn't go real well, as the alternator went bad in 7 laps, making him finish the race 60 laps down. His second start went better at Phoenix, as he ran in all the laps and finished 13th. In 2014, Daniel only ran one truck race, the season finale at Homestead, for NTS Motorsports, finishing 12th. Oddly enough, however, for this race, Daniel had Chris Rice for his crew chief. 2015 saw Daniel run his first full-time season in the truck series for NTS, we saw him score 13 top 10s and a 7th place points finish, with a best finish of 4th three times. 2016 saw a change in teams as Daniel went over to Brad Keselowski Racing, where he would score 17 top 10s and a pair of runner-ups with an average finish of 8.6, helping Daniel make the inaugural chase, acing the truck series, making him finish 6th in the points. Even without a victory on his truck series resume, Daniel's consistency helped him win a spot out over at RCR, to drive their number 21 for 2017 and 2018. 2017 was a relatively solid year for Hemrick. 7 top 5s and 16 top 10s with an average finish of 13.2 with the highest finish of 2nd at Mid-Ohio locked Daniel into the playoffs 
and managed to make the final four, but finished fourth in points after suffering battery issues in the race. 2018 saw a great year out of Hemrick. Hemrick scored 16 top fives, 23 top tens, four poles, with an average finish of ninth saw Hemrick place third in the standings. A big issue was, was that Daniel finished second four times this season with 440 laps led. The question started brewing, when? When will Daniel break through and get that first win? Well, that first Xfinity win would have to be put on hold as it was announced that Daniel would replace Ryan Newman in 2019 and drive the renumbered eight car for Richard Childress Racing. 2019 was not a season to brag about. He scored one top five at Talladega and two top tens, five DNFs, plus a shocking pole at Kansas late in the year. And all that gave him an average finish of 22.5 and a 25th place points finish. He still won Rookie of the Year, was more or less a consolation prize, considering the other rookies were driving in even worse cars and one of the rookies didn't even finish the season. 2019 wasn't a pretty year for RCR's cup program, but their Xfinity program was the talk of the garage as Tyler Reddick went, went on to win his second championship and going to replace Hemrick in the eight. Now looking for a ride, Daniel heads back down to the Xfinity Series to drive the number eight car for Junior Motorsports in 21 races. Daniel's year was a mix of good and bad. Seven top fives and 12 top tens with the best finish of, you guessed it, second twice. But he ended up also having seven DNS that season. After 2020, Daniel was able to find full-time work again and went to drive for Joe Gibbs Racing in their number 18 car. 2021 saw a lot of races where victory was in sight but was pulled away by the jaws of defeat. At Las Vegas, Daniel was leading with 18 to go until a caution and a poor restart from Daniel caused him to finish second to A.J. Allmendinger. At Martinsville, he was one of the faster cars in the end, but was held up battling Noah Gregson for second, and which let uh, Josh Berry get the win. At Charlotte, he was one of the dominant cars of the race, leading over half the race before being caught up in a late race accident. At Road America, he finished second to Kyle Busch. Atlanta ended up being a real gut punch. He was leading with 17 laps to go before a handful of late race cautions. And with six laps to go on, on a restart, a bad push from Kyle Busch sent Daniel up the track and into the wall resulting in a 30th place finish. That race had to sting. It made it even worse when even Kyle said he should have won the race. I wanted to hit him. I just wanted to hit him forward and straight, but um, you know, it turned him sideways a little bit, and then I think he got more help on his right side. But um, you know, it was just um, trying to help a teammate there, and that's why I restarted behind him. You know, But uh, overall, just great day for um, you know, our 54 car, but the 18 was better. and. Deserve this win, so I'm sorry to Daniel and those guys. Um, I hate it that all that transpired, but... Um... However, Daniel went ahead and licked his wounds and rebounded with a third at New Hampshire. Daniel made it to the playoffs, lost through his consistency, and in the first four races, he finished in top five with a second at Texas, where he was leading until a caution came out and got beat on pit road by John Hunter Nemechek after he took two tires. After the final race in the round of A at Martinsville, where he finished third, Daniel made it into the round of four, and going into Phoenix, he was the underdog, and quite frankly, as he should have. His fellow Final Four competitors were ahead of him by leaps and bounds. Austin Sindrick was the defending champion, A.J. Allmendinger was the regular season champion, and Noah Gregson got hot at the end and won the previous race at Martinsville. The championship weekend was already hectic before it even got started. On the Friday before the race, Hemrick's hauler had mechanical issues on the way to the Speedway. They had a small trailer pick up the car and take it to the track and had to use the ARCA hauler and equipment for that day. As race day approached, they had everything set up for the race. They qualified fourth for the race, second best of the championship four. Throughout the race, Daniel never left the top ten. He was always up front and in it to win it, even winning stage two. But as the race was closing in, it looked like Austin Sindrick was going to win back-to-back -back titles. But luck be a lady tonight for Daniel as a string of late race cautions would come to his benefit, as A.J. Allmendinger would spin and out bringing the first caution, which essentially eliminated A.J. from winning the title, leaving the other three to go at it. With 13 to go, Sindrick, Hemrick, and Gregson would restart 1-2-3 and have a short battle for one lap as another caution would come out. Now with eight laps to go, all three would restart the same way, but this time Austin pulls ahead of Daniel down the backstretch. With seven to go, as Austin and Daniel ran the bottom, Noah decides to take the top lane and ended up overdriving the turn and hitting the wall, ultimately taking himself out of the championship, leaving just Austin and Daniel to battle it out one-on-one. -on -one. 
Now going into overtime, Austin and Daniel would battle side by side for nearly a whole lap before Daniel would get loose into three and will fall behind but just still able to stay on Austin's quarter panel through one and two before falling in line going to the backstretch. At this moment, it looked like another one was going to slip away from Daniel's fingers. Everything leading up to this moment, all the second places, the could've, would've, should'ves, all the heartbreak, all the trials of perseverance and triumphs in his career, just to finish second again. Going to turn three, the only thing Daniel can be thinking is, no, not again, not this time. One more chance, the 22 in front, the 18, closing the gap. Just silence the doubters. He's made his own history. Daniel Hemrick wins. He's the Xfinity Series champion. And he did it. Daniel took that squeaky clean driving style of his and threw it out the window. Daniel gassed in four, endured Austin, and beat him at the line to finally grab that first win and the championship. A point system that screwed him out of the championship in 2018 has benefited him in 2021. And from then on, as they said, he never has to answer that stupid question again. Since this race, Daniel hasn't won another race, and if he doesn't win again in his career, I say, who cares? This one win alone has cemented the name champion to Daniel's name, and will be remembered for the final last grasp clutch performance that it had, and basically gives NASCAR the reason for the playoff system. That Game 7 winning feel-good moment. Anyway, that's another topic for another day. Thank you all for watching, and have a pleasant day. It is my honor and my privilege to present to you the 2021 Xfinity Series Championship Trophy. Well done, my friend.